This is Lawrence Mejia of The Pugilist Place, and today I am very lucky to be speaking with boxing prospect Esteban Munoz of San Bernardino, California. Esteban, thank you for the time. How are you? Uh, I'm doing really good, man. Thanks for having me. So you just got done sparring right now. Like, when you're done sparring, how do you usually feel? Do you feel, like, tired? Are you, like, all amped up and ready to go? Uh, really, it depends on, like, uh, the day, really. Like, if it's my first day uh, sparring out of the week, then I, I feel fine from, um, for the most part. Mostly, like, on Fridays, which is my last day of uh, uh, sparring out of the week, that's when I feel, like, really, really tired, and it's just... It's bad, <laughs> so but but today I, I feel great. Like I did, uh, what was it six rounds? Two different guys, and uh, I didn't really feel like that tired. So we're, and, we're good. And you look good in there. Yeah, thank you. So you're trained by noted trainer Henry Ramirez. Henry has been to the mountaintop of the sport with boxers such as Jose Cito Lopez, Chris Ariola. How did you come to be trained by him? Um, you know, it's a funny story, man. I was actually training in uh in Tecate, Mexico, and. Uh, I was actually out here for my cousin's wedding. Uh, he wanted me to, to be his best man, and then I was just, I was gonna be out here for like a week. So I was looking for gyms, and then I actually went to this other one called um, Capital Punishment, but I couldn't find it, so I just uh, I just decided to come to this gym. And then I don't know where, I just seen Henry, and I was just like, oh man, like, what the heck? like this is that guy, you know, from TV. So I was like, hey, what's up, man? And then, yeah, first day, he, uh, I thought I was gonna have to beat up a couple people so I could get to train with him. But the first day he seen me train, like he knew, he saw that I I, was, I knew what I was doing, so he was like, "Hey, bro, why don't you come down and train with my pros?" And that's just how it came about. So you saw the talent right away. Yeah, I want to say so. <laughs> um, so tell me, how did you get your start in the sport of boxing? Actually, um, it was 2010. I was watching the Manny Pacquiao versus uh, Antonio Margarito, and. Um, yeah, man, I just, like, I seen a little guy being, like, s such a big guy, and I'm just, like, I was just kind of, like, I didn't, I didn't think somebody can fight like that or do that, you know, to somebody that big. And ever since then, man, I just became, like, obsessed with, like, boxing and stuff like that. And I started training by myself, just looking at, like, uh, YouTube videos and stuff like that. And so eventually I, I went to uh, an actual gym and then started practicing, like, people like uh, act that I knew uh, that know about boxing and well uh, so it all started with that Manny Pacquiao fight yeah <laughs> so once you walked into a gym for the first time and then you actually you know started tr hitting the heavy bag and then started sparring what was your impression after that well when I first got to the gym I was it was like basically like uh, uh, it was like a how do you say like when you scratch something off your bucket list you know I always want to be in the gym and stuff like that and then uh, my first sparring man I like I, I got beat up, man, like pretty bad. And then I, I remember I told the guy, I was like, he was already a pro and I had no, no amateur fights, nothing. And he was, I told him, I was like, one day I'm gonna get you, and I was, I'm gonna get you back, bro. He was like, he was cool. He was like, oh yeah, bro, you know, it's like, you know, keep going and this and that. And I still need to get that, I still need to get that guy back. Man. <laughs> Did you play any other sports growing up? Yeah, actually we were in, um, in, in soccer, me and all my cousins growing up. But uh, I didn't used to like training, man. I used to hate training, like running and stuff like that. So I had the skills, but like I never really was like, like fast or I get tired quick and stuff like that. And I mean, that's that's all you do is train now. Yeah, man, it's crazy. When I first started boxing, mom was like, "Oh, you know, you have to box. You got to uh, run and this and that. You don't like running." Man. And she thought it was just like a uh, like one uh, like a like a one time thing or like uh, maybe for like a month or two. And then, but then she saw my my uh, dedication and like that I was actually like. Um, dieting and stuff like that so um, n now she helps me out man with like, air, like all my meals and stuff like that so so when you first when you first started sparring you got beat up or your first time sparring you got beat up when did you start noticing like I can do this like I am good at this uh, maybe like uh, probably like two three years in, in in the sport like I started like noticing um, well, actually before that like when I was like uh, like a year two, a year and a half like I was uh, I seen that the people that I started with, like I, I was like progressing much faster than, than everybody else. So, um, yeah, man. Like I remember I had my first sparring session that I actually felt like, oh man, I know what I'm doing. Like in Mexico, like against a big dude too. Like I, um, I was, I was like, okay, maybe I, I can do it, you know. But before it was just like one time I'll do good, and then like three, four times I'll do bad, and then like one time, and then next time I'll do good again and stuff like that. Right. But when I got here and I started sparring uh, my friend Anthony, I actually sparred him today as well. He used to beat me up too, man, like all the time. Like, I, but I used to like get in there too, you know. And then um, I started getting better and better, and now we go like we go at it like. Too pretty. He's quick. Uh, he's quick, man. He's real fast. And yeah. he's slippery too. Yeah, he's real. He's real good. What was your amateur career like? 
uh it was it was brief it was good but it was brief you know i only had like around probably like 20 had like like probably like five or six losses and stuff like that but i never like was like most of those losses were like um i felt like i won most of them but um maybe like one or two that i actually like okay you know i lost what do you think at, so at this point in your career what's the biggest difference between the amateur game and the professional game you know what is crazy to me is pretty much the same thing you know it's just like all I know is just I got to go in there and fight. You know, I always had the same style, which is like, I, I don't want to say it's like a one-dimensional. Like, I could do a lot of mm -hmm. a lot of things in there, you know. Like, so to me, it's always been the same. It's just seek and destroy, basically, you yeah. know. So. Well, and then obviously that, that style is more suited to the pro game. Mm, yeah. Um, as opposed to like the pity pat, getting p points and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I've never been a pity patter. Your nickname, Stonehands. See, it's a, we know you're not a pity patter because you got Stonehands. Yeah. <laughs> How'd you get the nickname? So, um... Well, uh, Anthony actually started telling uh, my coach Henry that that uh, he's like, man, this guy hits really, really hard, you know. Like, and then uh, one day we were sparring. I sparred two guys, and it was this big dude, right, 160 maybe. I want to say like big guy, big guy. And then I ended up dropping him to the body, man. Like I got him with a straight right, to, straight to the solar places, and he just dropped. And then I just like I I pretty much beat him up. And then I remember I still have the video too. And Henry, you could hear Henry in the back. He was like. Oh, nobody called him Stella. His, his name, his, his name now is uh, Stonehands, <laughs> and ever since then, man, Stonehands been at it. It's stuck. No. Yeah, it's stuck, man. It's crazy. It's it's a good nickname. You know what? Like, but like I, at first, I kind of didn't like it because like I kind of wanted like something different. You know, like I didn't want to like because it's kind of like Roberto Rand's right. name. You know, but I, I love it now. So <laughs> it's good, and then like you can see like when everybody like every, everybody here at the gym they call it, they they call it they accept it too. Like yeah, no, that's yeah. Stonehands. So many prospects at your point in your career, they move cautiously uh, in the beginning parts of their career. But you, on only your second bout, took on um, with George Acosta. And Co George Acosta is a very established Thompson boxing fighter. So tell me, why did you take that fight so early in your career? Because you, you lost that fight, but you made a good account of yourself and you yes. showed that you belong at the level. Well, I mean, it is, I mean, it all, I want to say it's because the pandemic, you know, like um, I wasn't really getting any fights and then they offered me this fight in five days. So I wasn't really training at all, you know, and I don't want to make no excuses. You know, the guy, is, he's good, you know, he's legit. But I've seen, I seen his videos, I've seen his, his fights and stuff like that. And I know I got more talent than he does, you know. So um, I was like, I was 2-0, two knockouts, man, first round. So and then I hit pretty hard. So I was just like, all right, you know, I just knocked this guy out and go about my day, go next fight, you know. And uh but I took uh, it, it was a, it was a hard pill, uh, uh, like a sour pill to swallow, you know, like a like a reality check, you know, because uh, I realized that like talent is not everything, you know, like you gotta you gotta train and you gotta be dedicated. And um, yeah, man, I lost. And uh, but I, yeah, like I said, you know, like I didn't, I, I really didn't get embarrassed or anything. Like I felt like if it would have been anybody else, like I would have knocked them out. But this guy had a chin, man, because I did land some pretty vicious vicious so shots. And he just kept coming, man. Like, the guy's tough. Because George, just, he just won, like, a regional title not too long yes. ago. Like, just recently. And so when I saw that fight announced, I was like, whoa. Like, Esteban, like, I knew you had just gone pro. You'd had a couple of fights. But that was a pretty gutsy move at that point yeah. in your career. But you're right. You showed that you belong. Like, you showed the yes. composure. You're, you're, you know. Yeah, may maybe I feel like I was a little too too cocky for my own good, you know. Like, I, I feel like invincible and stuff like that, you know. So that's, that's why I took it. And... I feel like I, I really do believe in my skills, you know. That's why, like, I had no problem taking it, you know, five days or let's do it, you know. My next fight, I took that in, in two two weeks as well, you know. So I, I don't really care. I'll fight whoever, you know. And you, and you need that as a professional fighter, mm -hmm. that full confidence in your abilities and skills. Who are some of the boxers that inspire you? Oh, man, like I said earlier, you know, Manny Pacquiao is, like, on the top of my list. You know, he's uh, he's just one of a kind, man. And most, a lot, man, like, honestly, like, I, I watch a lot of boxing, and I know pretty much the whole history, you know, like, back and forth, like, anything for Sugar Ray, uh, Sugar Ray Robinson, Sugar Ray Leonard, um, mostly, all those guys, man, like, it's just, um, I try to, like, I, wa I watch a lot of boxing, and, like, I try to take everybody's, um, something from everybody, you know, and then put it, in, like, in a pot, and then just come up with my own stuff. And so that was going to be my follow-up question, because, you know, fans watch it, some people are some people are having a good time, they're spending, they're socializing, some people are partying. Like, you as a professional boxer, you're, like, technically breaking down and trying to take pieces of the, each fighter their game. Is that how you're watching these fights? 
Yeah, yeah, like I um, and then it, it doesn't even have to be like a certain punch or like whatever. Like it, I I take whatever you know, like a fame, like whatever. Like, uh, yeah, I take I I'm watching, bro. Like like when, like people watching and just just like they just see two guys punching each other, you know. Like but like us as, as fighters, we we see what's going on in the little things, the little subtle things, you know. And you try to take that and apply it in, in your game. The way I the way I see it, like like if I see something like. I'll try it, I'll apply it in the gym, and if it works for me, then, then I'll keep it. If it doesn't, then, you know, I'll just, I'll just discard it. What did you think about the Ramirez-Taylor fight this last weekend? Oh, man, I, I got to watch uh, half of the fight, man. I was actually pretty upset because uh, I couldn't watch the, the whole thing, and I've been wanting to watch that fight for a while. But, man, it's, it was it was just tough, man. You know, I actually won 50 bucks on um, on Taylor. <laughs> yeah. You bet on it? Yeah, I bet on him. Everybody was like, nah, nah, because the people that I know, like, they know uh, Mikey Garcia and all them, yeah. you know, so they're all going for Ramirez, you know. And then, um, yeah, I was betting everybody. I was like, nah, it's Taylor, you know. And yeah, ended up winning 50 bucks. <laughs> it's a very good fight. What weight division do you fight out of? Uh, right now, actually, I'm fighting at my, – my next fight is at 142. But um, usually I've been fighting at 140. But I'm going. I'm I'm going down to 135. Oh, so you're gonna drop down? Yes, yes. Okay. Um. So to somebody that has never seen you fight before, describe your style of fighting. I want to say uh, I don't have like a like a certain style. Like I I I guess my style is a little awkward. Like I do like a lot of stuff that you wouldn't like no, normally see, like conventional and stuff like that. I mean, I'm not like a weird, ugly fight uh, like style, you know, but. But yeah, like I, I, I want to say if I had to describe my style as like a, like a, um, like a boxer puncher, you know, like I like to box, I like to mix it up, and I mean, I, obviously, I don't like getting hit, you know. But if I gotta get hit and I gotta be in there, get dirty, then you know I will. So be it. What's your best weapon inside the ring? Um, aside from my power, you know, a lot of people like think it's just my power, but uh, uh, I, I would say my, my, my counter ability, my, my timing and stuff like that. And uh, I'm pretty fast. Like I got some speed on myself too, you know. So, but mo most of the thing, mo mostly I, I would say um, my counters. I'm I'm a pretty good counter puncher. And you have some footwork in there too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so boxing requires a ton of uh, dedication. What are some of the things you like to do away from the sport of boxing? You know, it's crazy, man. I uh, you wouldn't think, but uh, um, I recently started playing. Uh, well, not recently. It's already probably been like more, like almost a year. Like I've been playing a lot of video games and stuff like that, like Call of Duty. And stuff. Yeah. Yeah, man. It keeps me away from like. I was honestly, I rather, I rather uh, play Call of Duty than than to, you know, actually go out and party, get drunk and stuff like that. Keeps you out of trouble. Um, yeah, yeah, it does, man. A lot. Are you one of those guys who goes on YouTube and like looks at like all those professional gamers and? <laughs> Uh, between me and you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it keeps me out of trouble though, man. It actually, uh, it, it keeps me in trouble with my girl, but like that's about it. <laughs> she gets the old man. Yeah, she be like, hey man, you always like you pay attention. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so your fight's coming up June 9th. What are some of the things you're working on with Henry right now in the gym for in preparation for that fight? Uh, we're just working on a little bit of everything, you know. The guy I'm fighting, he's actually like five ten, pretty tall, you know. I'm like around five seven. Um. So like we're we're just basically working on like getting in the inside and uh, making it uh, our fight, you know, because I know I can't like even though I'm a good counter puncher, I can't stay on the outside for too long. But like as you see, er as you seen earlier, like um, I got pretty quick feet, so like I mean, uh, I'm ready to get in right. there and in and out and stuff like that. In and out, just bang when you need to, back off when, yep. when when it dictates. Yes, sir. So when it's all said and done, you're at the beginning of your career. When it's all said and done, what do you want to have accomplished in the sport of boxing? Man, well, I mean, just like any other boxer, you know, any anybody who who, who boxes and stuff like that, like, I mean, I want to become world champion eventually, and more than anything, I mean, I want to make a lot of money, more than, you know, than I can know what to do with, you know, <laughs> so, yeah, pretty much, yeah, like, I just want to be set, you know, and, like, take care of my people and stuff like that. What, is it, what does it mean to you to be from San Bernardino and the Inland Empire and be a professional athlete? Oh, uh, man, it feels great, man. I, I Honestly, like, I feel like I'm putting, like, our city like on the map you know with like a good cause you know now because i mean you know that it's like it's known for bad things you know so it's good to like be able to like uh put us put us in the map with like something positive and stuff like that absolutely absolutely esteban thank you so much for the time we genuinely appreciate it we look forward to you and hearing good news about your performance coming up on june 9th where can fight fans follow you on social media um right now my my instagram is uh hands of stone seven that's it. <laughs> That's it? You're not on Twitter? 
No, no Twitter. I'm just strictly yeah. Instagram. You gotta get on Twitter. That's what yeah, the no, man, are. no. <laughs> Esteban, thank you. We don't want to take any more of your time. Thank you thank so you, much. Sir. Thank you, guys, and uh, I look forward to you know talking to you guys again.